We have finally finished our Big Ten college football predictions. The largest conference in all of college football, 18 teams. A true super conference. We have predicted every single game for every single team, and now we're here to break down our official Big Ten standings and share with you who we think will win this conference and clinch themselves a guaranteed spot in the college football playoff. So welcome back to the Gridiron Expert, guys. We're so glad you could join us today. As always, please continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and check out everything down in the description below. That includes our website, thegridironexpert.com, home to our expert picks, some of the best picks in the entire country for one of the lowest prices in the country. Many of you have already signed up for those, and that's great because if you have, you're already getting our exclusive betting newsletter, expert picks, betting newsletter, straight to your inbox, tons of exclusive content through that. So go sign up for the picks today, guys, and also check out everything else down in the description so you can become a member of our GE Nation as we get closer and closer to the start of this season. So let's just go ahead and pull it up. Let's pull up our Big Ten standings. You know the drill at this point. If you've been here at the channel, we do this for every single conference. We run through all these teams as quick as we can because we've got a lot to go through. Share our projected championship game. Share our projected champion. Uh, And then, of course, at the end of the season and prediction season, we will have our projected 12-team playoff. This is a Big Ten conference, guys, that despite having 18 teams, uh, is going to be very, very competitive, very top-heavy, I should add, and could get as many as three or four teams into the college football playoff. The usual suspects are at the top, or maybe I should say a newer suspect is at the top. We do have Oregon at the top of the standings as of right now, 11-1, 8-1, in a tie with Ohio State. So obviously, you don't have to be a genius to realize we're picking Oregon to beat Ohio State in Eugene in mid-October. The Ducks are elite. 17 starters are back. So much talent. They get to host Ohio State. They have to go on the road to Michigan. Other than that, pretty favorable schedule. Same for Ohio State. 11-1, 8-1. Very, very talented team. A team we talked about. It feels like playoff, really national championship or bust for the Buckeyes. They went all in on the transfer portal, all in on the NIL. Loaded with talent. Arguably the best defense in all the land. They do have to go to Oregon and Penn State, but they get to host Michigan which is huge for the Buckeyes if they lost three straight to their bitter rivals. So those are our top two teams. Those two teams we do project will meet in the Big Ten Championship, and we'll break that down here in just a minute. Michigan coming in at number three, the reigning national champion. Still a potential playoff team. We have them at 10-2, but 8-1 and one in conference play. So yes, we do have them losing to Texas in week two. Now obviously for them, the defense is going to be very, very good. It's the quarterback play and the offensive line play that will dictate how good this Michigan team can be especially under a new head coach in Sharon Moore. But they've got a lot of talent. Some of their biggest games are at home in Texas, USC, and Oregon. So if they can take care of business there, that road game at Ohio State, although it will be big, may not dictate whether or not they go to the playoff or not, as long as they take care of business at home. Iowa might come as a surprise. See them in at number four, 10-2, and 8-1. And, and again, you can see how top-heavy this is. We have four teams at 8-1 and one in conference play. That shows you how competitive it's going to be for that one of two spots in the Big Ten Championship game. And you might look at Iowa and go, how? How is that possible? Well, guys, Iowa's won 10 games in three of the last five seasons. This is not a hard thing to comprehend. And the Hawkeyes have a very, very, very favorable schedule. Iowa State at Minnesota at Ohio State, those are all pretty early on in the year. Probably the toughest games of the year. Later, they get to host Wisconsin and they get to host Nebraska. Everything else in between is pretty easy for this Iowa team that's once again going to have one of the best defenses in the country. No shock there. And the offense should finally get better. Not elite or dangerous, but better. New offensive coordinator in Tim Lester. Cade McNamara fully healthy, so a solid quarterback. The Hawkeyes are the real deal. Pair them with a very, very good schedule, and they could be a college football playoff team this year. That's how much faith I have in Kirk Ferentz's squad, and he has the history to back that up. Penn State also at 10-2, and 7-2. and two. That's a, maybe a disappointing mark for the Nittany Lions. Be interesting to see if they get into the playoff with that record. Uh, you know, we look at Penn State, and you say they've been so good under James Franklin, but being unable to beat the big dogs, such as Ohio State, haven't beaten them, since the last time they did in 2016, which kind of put Penn State back on the map, uh, that's prevented them from getting over the hump and getting to another Big Ten championship, from getting to a college football playoff spot. This is the year they need to get there, but they have two new coordinators. They've got to get more explosive on offense. The defense is going to still be one of the best, but a lot of trap games on the schedule. Season opener at West Virginia, not going to be easy. Yes, they have to host Ohio State, but right now the Buckeyes own that edge considering they haven't lost to Penn State since 2016, like we mentioned. They do have to go on the road to USC. They've got to go on the road to Wisconsin. 
So a tough schedule for the Nittany Lions, and James Franklin squads typically do slip up in an area where they shouldn't. We think that will once again be the case this year. Go watch that Penn State video to find out exactly where. USC, their first year in the conference, got them an 8-4, and 7-2. and two. How? Because of the non-conference. That the non-conference slate is tough for the Trojans. They start the season with a game in Las Vegas against LSU. They end the season with a home game against Notre Dame. Those are two very difficult non-conference games, both of which right now we believe USC loses. But the rest of the Big Ten slate isn't all that bad. Got to go to Michigan, sure, but they get to host Wisconsin, Penn State, Rutgers, and Nebraska. Some of the better teams in this conference have to go out to the Coliseum. That works in Lincoln Riley's favor. They should be in for a solid year, 8-4, and four, really one upset away from maybe challenging for a Big Ten title spot or maybe an elite bowl spot. Love this Rutgers team. Love Rutgers at 8-4. and four. Uh, This is a team that's talented on both sides of the ball. Got the returning Big Ten leading rusher from last year and Kyle Manungai. They have a great underrated defense. No one's talking about Rutgers, period, but definitely not their defense. And they are very, very good and very stingy. Greg Schiano doing great things in Pescataway. 7-6 and six last year, winning their bowl game over Miami. Then they win eight regular season games this year. If they can find a way to win a game or two on the road, maybe they shouldn't, like the road game at Virginia Tech, the road game at Nebraska, the road game at USC. Rutgers could have a 9-10 win season. Could be in for a much more special year than 8-4 and four already is. So watch out for Rutgers. If you're looking for a dark horse, they could be the team. Nebraska finally gets back to a bowl game. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Matt Rule is the savior in Lincoln. Eight and four for the Cornhuskers. Uh, I mean, God, their bowl streak, their bowl woes finally come to an end, but this could be viewed as a disappointment. And I'm here to tell you, if you're a Nebraska fan, you're disappointed with eight and four, you got to check yourself, man. You, you just need to be happy for six and six. You just need to be happy to get into a bowl game. Matt Rule is going to do much more than that, but the Cornhuskers do have a very favorable schedule. So favorable, they could start six and one, seven and zero. Oh. Which means if that happens and they finish 8-4, and four, that means they really struggled on the back end of the schedule. But that is to be expected. In those last few games, they have to go to Ohio State. They have to go to USC, to Iowa. And then they do play Wisconsin at home, but they've lost 9 straight to the Badgers. So a very difficult slate on the back end of the schedule, which is why Nebraska has to take care of business in the front end. And I believe they will. 8-4. and four. What a year in year or two under Matt Rule. Always the year that he breaks through with his respective teams. Indiana at, oh, sorry, no, Wisconsin. We'll get to Indiana. Wisconsin at 7-5. and five. Tyler Van Dyke transfers in from Miami, gives Wisconsin solid quarterback play. Always a strong defense. Watch out for the Badgers. They host the big dogs in Madison. Alabama, Penn State, and Oregon all go to Camp Randall Stadium. And Wisconsin will win at least one of those games. Go check out our Wisconsin video to find out who we believe they will be out of those three big dogs. Indiana. First year under Kurt Signetti, yeah, we've got him going 7-5. and five. I know that sounds hard to believe, but this is the day and age of college football where we have the transfer portal and we have NIL and we have the ability to really build a team. It's not recruit and build in three, four years. It's build a team now. And that's what Kurt Signetti's doing. He's never had a losing season in his coaching career. Brings in loads of transfers on both sides of the ball and not just mediocre transfers, good transfers. Factor in that the Hoosiers have eight, eight home games this year. A great home schedule. Their only road games are on the road at UCLA, Northwestern, Michigan State, and Ohio State. Three of those are very winnable. Ohio State, obviously, the one that's not. Indiana will, will go bowling this year. And I think they finish the season with a winning record before they even get to the postseason. The question is now, can they win a postseason game? They've been there before. Can't win. Can Kurt Signetti change that? Maryland at 6-6, the last Big Ten team we have bowl eligible, which might come as a shot, but that just shows how strong this conference is. A lot of bowl eligible teams, a lot of bowl teams that are ineligible. But Maryland, new quarterback at MJ Morris, how quickly does he thrive with this offense? And Traditionally under Mike Loxley, the offense has been good, the defense has been shaky. This year it's the reverse. The defense, especially the front seven, going to be very good for Maryland. The offense going to go through some growing pains. I still think they get to a bowl game, which would be their fourth straight under Mike Loxley. They win that. It would be another winning season, another bowl win. He's doing great things for the Terrapins. Maybe a disappointing season for some, but again, a bowl berth, considering the changes, would be, to me, successful. Go to the final few uh, a little quickly here. Minnesota, a lot of starters back. That's great. How quickly does Max Brosmer, the transfer in from New Hampshire, how quickly does he uh, fix Uh, the issues on offense for Minnesota. They were really bad offensively last year. The offense needs to take a big step forward. The defense needs to get back to looking like they did in 2022. They made a bowl game last year because of their APR. So remember, kids, academics do matter. But 
The Golden Gophers, I think, fall just short. If they want to go bowling, they're going to have to find a way to steal a home game over North Carolina, Iowa, or USC, all coming early in the season. They can win just one of those. They'll go to the postseason. I think they fall just short. Illinois, same for them. 5-7 and seven last year for the Fighting Illini. Had 3-1 possession losses. That's the Brett Bielema staple. They always lose those one-possession games, whether he was at Wisconsin, Arkansas, or Illinois. It is what he does best. The Fighting Illini still can't get over the hump this year. Lose a couple one-possession games. Fall short of a bowl game at 5-7. and seven. Washington, the national runner-up. Yeah, we've got them at 5-7. and seven. Big step back for the Huskies. I know that's a shock, but they lose everybody. They lose their coach. They lose their offense. They lose the majority of their defense. Only four starters back on that side of the ball. Yes, Will Rogers transfers in from Mississippi State. I think he'll do well there, and Washington will be relatively competitive, but after a strong start where I think they can start 4-0, the Huskies will be an underdog in six or seven of their final eight games. They're going to have to find a way to pull off some upsets. I don't think they're able to do it. Road games at Rutgers, Penn State, Oregon, Iowa, hosting Michigan. Who's going to be the better team once again, just like they were in the national championship last year? The Huskies are in for a big step back, very similar to what we saw last year with TCU, the national runner-up in 2022. Michigan State going to be bad this year. New first year under Jonathan Smith and with a major rebuild for the Spartans. Went uh, 4-8. Four, four uh, what we've got for them this year. Ten starters back on defense. Might be solid. The offense those what's going to need the most work. UCLA at 3-9. and nine, Another Big Ten newcomer coming in from the Pac-12. Deshaun Foster. Will he pan out? Time will tell. I think he's a good hire. He knows the program well. Spent seven years as the running back coach. But the schedule for the Bruins was just abysmal. It was, it was just brutal. They've got a horrible month of November. And then early in the year, they've got a three-game stretch against LSU, Oregon, and Penn State. Two of those on the road. The schedule makers did UCLA no. No favors in this transition period, and it will be a rough year for them. Still getting a conference win, though. Same for Purdue. I like this Purdue team. I think they've got a lot of talent, but the schedule makers did them no favors. Purdue has one of the toughest schedules in the entire country, potentially playing four top ten teams on their schedule. They draw Notre Dame out of the non-conference. They play three of the top four teams in the Big Ten. The only one they avoid is Michigan. they got to go on the road to Wisconsin. they got to go on the road to Oregon State, which won't be easy. So Purdue, while it should be better statistically, talent-wise, competitively, probably will not show in the win totals because of how bad that schedule is. And then finally, Northwestern, the team of destiny last year, 8-5 and five last season, but they will take a major step back. The Wildcats were one of the most fortunate teams in the nation in 2023. Lightning will not strike twice in Evanston. We have them going winless in conference play. Do not be surprised to see them lose a game in the non-conference, maybe to Duke or Miami, Ohio. Year two under David Braun will look like what a year one should have looked like for them last year, if that makes sense. Typically, year one under new head coaches, especially when you're dealing with an uh, off-field scandal, typically they're not very good. He defied those odds. This year is going to be what last year should have been. Northwestern, major step back, but he still is the man for the job. So wrapping all that up, guys, we've got the Big Ten Championship, Oregon and Ohio State. Bottom line is this. This game is a battle for who gets a bye week in the college football playoffs. So it's massive. Both teams are going to the college football playoffs, but the winner gets the bye. The loser will have to get will get to host an on-campus game in the first round. So who gets the big bye week? Who gets revenge here? Will it be Ohio State getting revenge over Oregon? Will it be Oregon winning twice over the Buckeyes? I don't think so. Give me Ohio State. To win the Big Ten. I do believe Ohio State is the best team in this conference. From top to bottom. Offensively. Certainly defensively. They still have a fantastic head coach in Ryan Day. I believe they are the best team in this conference. I think they slip up on the road at Oregon. Because Oregon's a very talented team. And a very difficult place to play. But you put these teams on neutral site. For the second time. For the second meeting this year. Ryan Day will not lose twice. and He will not lose at a neutral site. Ohio State beats Oregon. The Buckeyes will be your Big Ten champions. Finally reclaiming the Big Ten after it's been run by Michigan these last few years. They will clinch a first-round bye in the college football playoff. One of those four first-round buys. Oregon will get to host a college football playoff game. And who knows? Maybe we'll get to see these teams meet a third time in the college football playoff, or maybe in the national championship. Who knows? But regardless, going to be a heck of a season for these teams. Heck of a championship game. And both will be in the playoff, and who knows what other Big Ten teams could join them. So guys, as always, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert on YouTube, our official Big Ten standings. Leave your thoughts and comments below, and go check out all of these individual team videos to see each individual game predicted for all 18 
Big Ten teams. Say that three times fast. But thank you so much for watching. Please continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos. Check out everything down in the description below. That includes our website, thegridonexpert.com, home to those expert picks, those exclusive newsletters, and everything you need to help make this season the best season possible as a member of our GE Nation. And once again, as always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on The Gridiron Expert. Expert.